Hello, I'm going to show my method, your method, everyone's method of finding a good polar alignment for the Questar or for any fork mounted scope, I would think. First of all, why would you not have a computerized scope? Well, it's actually fun to find stars under your own power uh, with an atlas or with a handheld program to show you the coordinates. Many times I've seen a great view through someone's scope and asked where is that star i'd like to find it for myself and the person says i have no idea i simply pressed in the number and the scope went there i think it's much nicer feeling to have a scope that you can point yourself and find the reason you do polar alignment is so that you can look in the book and say where is this thing i want to look at and it'll tell you in the book and you can dial it in very nice that you did that yourself uh, makes you feel better. So this is why we do it. Uh, the first thing I'll suggest, of course, make it be nighttime. Uh, wear your red light. I need glasses because the, for me, I can't see the fine markings on the gauges without glasses. So I'm kind of encumbered when I go outside. I got my pockets full, extra lenses. I've got my 24 Brandon here. Just because it's a little easier to set up the tripod, set up the polar alignment with a less powerful lens. It's up to you what you use. May I suggest the first thing you do? Uh, since I use mine for birding, it's a duplex. I never know what uh, the last focus was. So if you just go out and you start right away with the thing at 90 degrees to find the pole star, which you'll have to do, you'll then find your focusing is way inside the fork and hard to get to. If you're trying to find the pole star reaching inside to focus, it's not so nice. So when you first go out at night then, uh, find any star that you then throw the mirror and get your eyepiece to be working and focus that star so that when you do go to the 90 degree position and you're looking for Polaris, you don't have to reach underneath and focus with your little focus knob. It's a little difficult. It's just one of those finer points you want to do it ahead of time. So, uh, pretend that's in focus. Pretend it's nighttime. Pretend I've got my red light on. All that stuff. So, uh, may I caution you, this is so dangerous when you're dealing with supporting the instrument. I often want to just take it off. Uh, of course, you could have it out in front and you're supporting the, the optical tube directly. It's just so dangerous to consider this as part of the scope when really it isn't. It might come off in the in the darkness, so be careful. This is a little safer. Pretend I got my lens cap off. I'm ready now to find Polaris. I'm, I see it there, I can tell where it is. Um, I want the scope to be set at either 89 on one way or 89 the other way. So there's the first question, which one will it be? Uh, there's 90 degrees. Polaris is one degree or so off of the North Celestial Pole. So if you set it at 90 and find Polaris, you'll be one degree off. It'll mess up everything else. Uh, so you have to say, what time of year is it? What do I have in the sky at the same time? So for me right now, it's May, May evenings, the Asterism, the Big Dipper is up, very high. Big Dipper will either be up or Cassiopeia will be up in the autumn. And so one of those two you'll be able to use to help you determine where the pole star is in relation to those. The pole star is farther from the Big Dipper and closer to Cassiopeia. That can help you. So if the Big Dipper is in the sky at night, you're going to want to set it at 90 degrees away add one degree to the 90 away from the Big Dipper. So imagine right now we have the Big Dipper here up on my right hand and I see the pole star below it. I, I imagine that angle is greater than the angle if Cassiopeia was in the sky. So I add a degree away from the Big Dipper. I hope it's not too complicated. So I'll I'll rotate that scope to be away so that the eyepiece came up a little bit. I see 89. 
on the declination gear. Let me show you. So our declination is here and we want one degree away from the Big Dipper. So there would be 90 right there. One degree away, 89. Of course, it would have been 89 the other way too. So you have to consider what constellation you're going away from or toward. And as I say, this is springtime. So the Big Dipper, the Great Bear is up. I want to go away from that to be a good alignment. So I've got 89. The uh, eyepiece has risen a bit. The tube has gone down. That tells me I'm going away from the Big Dipper. So what do I mean by that? So as we have this at 89 on the correct side of 90, we now no longer touch the scope itself. We only touch the tripod. Here's a Manfrotto tripod. Uh, people at Company 7 said, for my birding needs, this would be great for both. A very sturdy carbon fiber tripod. So I want to now, without touching the fork, I don't care now about the RA circle at the moment. I want to find Polaris simply by moving the tripod. And so I'm in Texas, so it's darn far over. Of course, my eyepiece would be open. I'm pretending I'm looking. Uh, so most of our first setting up is actually seeing the pole star and by, by sighting through the cylinder of the optical tube, you can get very close to what you're looking at. Uh, have the finder open, not the eyepiece, and get Polaris as close as you can with the finder, simply by rotating and moving your tripod. I have to support the, the scope. That's why I took the uh, sky, sky chart off, because moving the whole tripod to find Polaris is difficult. After a bit, with the finder, then you magnify, use the eyepiece, and get as close as you can to the center of your eyepiece without having touched the fork. Again, where is the Big Dipper? You're here looking at Polaris, and you look at your Big Dipper, or Cassiopeia for that matter. You look clockwise around the sun, clockwise around the North Star, excuse me, the tail of the Big Dipper or the edge of Cassiopeia. So it's either Epsilon Cassiopeia or it's Alcade, the star. They are on the clockwise, clockwise end of the constellation. That point is where you want your eyepiece to be angled. And so we can rotate the scope without harming our declination. So you align your eyepiece with the clockwise end of either Cassiopeia or the Big Dipper. As I say, Alcade on the end or Epsilon Cassiopeia. Line up your eyepiece with that point. So there is a line going through the celestial pole and you've sighted Polaris. That will give you an excellent, and you're at 89 if it's, uh, if we have the Big Dipper in the sky, we have an extra degree away from that. If it's Cassiopeia, we have a, a degree less toward Cassiopeia. Your 89 either side then is determined by the season you're in and where this is lined. You now have a very good one degree off of the celestial pole. That's the first step. Now you no longer touch your tripod. No longer touch your tripod. You're now free to move your scope around. Step two is to find a star which is close to the equator. Uh, my time of year, April, we have Regulus, which is about 10 or 12 degrees off. If you have a uh, Procyon in the sky, that's only five degrees off the equator, that might be better. So you look up the coordinates for either of those and sight that star in your scope. So now I'm free to use the scope, but I'm not free to move the tripod. The tripod is now set for the pole. 
I'm imagining now, imagining now I'm finding a star on the equator, imagining I'm actually using my scope. And when it's centered, when it's centered, then knowing the coordinates of the star, I move my right ascension circle. I'll show that to you. Of course, you know what it is. So with two fingers, this is only one because I'm holding the camera, you can rotate this to put the correct line at your hairline for the correct coordinates for either Procyon for me or Regulus. The larger numbers are for the Northern Hemisphere, smaller for Southern. Sorry about that, Southern Hemisphere. We're always shortchanging somebody around here. So imagine now we have this star sighted and put correctly on our right ascension circle. We are now completed. We have completed two of the steps of our process. So with these two steps completed, this is really as good an alignment as you might need. You might very well find that any star you look up in your book, you can then just uh, set your declination, set your RA from the chart, and you'll be very close, at least with the finder, you'll be able to find it. But there is a third step. The book shows you your quest star manual. If you would set the coordinate for Polaris, is it uh, two hours, 30, two hours, 40 minutes? I forget what it is. But if you then go to your set RA circle, find two hours, 40, then find Polaris. This is simply a finer adjustment. You've set the telescope now at the correct coordinates of Polaris from the book. And then you find it for the second time without having touched the RA circle, you, but you set it at the correct place, then you find it at the 89 it should be, but you adjust your tripod one last time to get the sighting perfect. With those three steps then, you have an excellent alignment for the next several hours of your work. Of course, this whole time you've been working, you had to have the clock running. As soon as you touched the setting of the RA circle, you needed the clock running so that for the last few minutes, it's been keeping track of your setting from Procyon or Regulus or Altair or Mintaka, something along the equator that you've used. You had to have the clock running. So as soon as you come out, of course, at night, you get your clock going. Now that your three steps are done, you can then get your dew cap on and go about your business uh, citing anything you like from your your pocket atlas or whatever. Just since I'm here I wanted to show you this great part Vanguard makes it. This one is TBH 300. It's for uh, putting on your tripod when you're simply using your your optical tube without the fork mount. It's uh, cumbersome to take that birding. So you take this birding and it has this quick release so that you can adjust your tube quite nicely. You can find the bird quite well, lock it, and have a nice view quickly without having to f fiddle with your knobs. It's really quite a cool product. I like that. A photographer gave that idea to me. Very nice. Thank you, Jake. Good. Good luck.